Hi, my name is Ted Venema. I have a PhD in audiology. I've taught audiology at Auburn University in Alabama and at Western University in London, Ontario. But I've also taught in college pro programs for hearing instrument practitioners. Uh, and right now I'm teaching at Douglas College in Coquitlam, BC. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about hearing loss and let's have an introduction here. Helen Keller, who was both deaf and blind. She had rheumatic fever at age 18 months, lost her sight and her hearing. She said blindness cuts people off from things. Hearing loss cuts people off from other people. She was asked what sense she would rather have back if she had a choice. She said hearing. Now, I would have chosen vision, but she said hearing because she said if she could only have had her hearing back, she would have been able to learn speech and language. She had a stubborn teacher, Mrs. Sullivan, who held her hand under water as she was pumping it, and the lady kept drawing a W on her hand, and finally Helen got it, that a symbol stood for something. But she said it would have been so much easier had she been able to hear. She said, the problems of deafness are more complex, if not more important, than those of blindness. Deafness is a much worse misfortune, for it means the loss of the most vital stimulus. The sounds of the voice that brings language, sets thoughts astir, and keeps us in the intellectual company of people. Who has hearing loss? Well, 30% of people over 65, that's one in three. 50% of people over 75, that's half. I mean, it's as common as the day is long. And what's our, what are the Compton, common symptoms of hearing loss? Feeling like people mumble. Now let's stop here and examine why that might be the case. Speech. Even the word speech. Speech. You'll hear the e and the s. There's low pitch parts of speech and high pitch parts. Put your hand to your throat and say A, E, A, O. You feel your throat vibrate. Hold your hand there now and say S, S, H. You don't feel it vibrate. Those are consonants, high pitched consonants. They tell you what the word is. Did they say kittens or mittens, dishes or fishes? Hat, fat, cat, sat. They all have A, ah, A, ah, but what makes them different is the K, P, T, SH. Those are treble sounds, high pitched. And elderly people with hearing loss have trouble hearing treble. The trouble with treble. And when you can't hear trouble, <laughs> when you can't hear treble, you're in trouble because you have difficulty hearing what someone said. Not that someone said something, but what. Here's another symptom. Difficulty hearing in noise. A chain is as strong as its weakest link. You might be able to hear one-on-one, -on -one, but in a difficult, noisy situation, you can really run into trouble when you've got trouble hearing treble. Car here's a cartoon from the Canadian Hearing Society. Get this. But I, ne but I never ordered hamburgers to go for 200 people. I ordered hamburgers to go for two hungry people. Now, there's not a whole lot of difference in the sounds there, but if you miss a word here, you ruin, you, you, you'll miss the whole joint, the, the, whole, the whole point. And that's what happens with hearing loss, because people remember that they said the wrong, that they didn't catch the joke, and they missed it, and they feel embarrassed. And finally they say, why don't you guys just go on out and have a good time? I think I'm going to stay back here and read a book. And that's exactly what Helen Keller was saying. Blindness may cut people off from things, but hearing loss cuts people off from other people. Hearing loss is poorly understood. It's an invisible disability. It affects not only the person who has it, but also affects people around him or her. Because hearing loss involves relationships, communication. Communication involves relationships and hearing. It's all connected that way. So when you think about fitting the eye versus fitting the ear, let's look here for a second. Let's look at the eye, vision loss. Most, the back of the eye I drew in yellow. That's called the retina. That changes light into electricity. And electricity is the language the brain understands. Well, with most vision loss, light isn't properly reaching the retina. So you've got to get glasses, put them on to refocus the light so that it does hit the retina. Then God's in his heaven and all's well with the world. Okay, now let's look at hearing on this side. And I put a not equal sign because they are very different. 
You have the outer ear with the canal. You've got the middle ear with the three smallest bones of the body, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And then you have the inner ear. And that's where tiny cells are located that change sound into electricity. And electricity is the language the brain understands. Well, hair cells inside that cochlea or inner ear, I say those are like the retina in quotes of the ear. And in 95% of hearing loss, that's what's damaged. That would be like me going to the back of your eye, going <laughs> scratching the retina, going, okay, now put on your glasses. See, hearing loss is very different from vision loss. Let's look at the outer ear, the ear canal, and then the middle ear, the eardrum, the three little bones of the middle ear. You could fit them all on a nickel. We don't have pennies anymore. At any rate, look at the, the uh, cochlea. It's as big as the tip of your little finger. And the word cochlea, C-O-C-H-L-E-A, -C -O -C cochlea, is Greek for snail shell. And it's a tiny little organ. So the outer, the middle, the inner ear or cochlea. That's where the trouble is. Here's a cross section of that cochlea. Remember this whole thing is as big as the tip of your finger. So look at the, the gray is all bone and the orange is fluid inside. And when you look inside of these little triangular areas, that's where tiny little cells are located called hair cells. That's what they look like. You'll see a row here and three rows over here. This is in someone with nice, normal, healthy hearing, normal cochleas, young person. At any rate, maybe a person just, person just has normal hearing. Well, now look at what happens with hearing loss. Now the hair cells are damaged. You can't fix this. You can't go in with a scalpel and operate on something as big as the tip of your little finger and, and try to replace thousands of little hair cells. This is the situation. So a verbal analogy of this and this would be this. Perfect hearing looks like this. Impaired hearing looks like this. And it doesn't matter whether you're English or Chinese or wherever you come from. It's trouble hearing treble. And the word for it is called presbycusis. P-R-E-S-B-Y-C-U-S-I-S. -S. Presby sounds like Presbyterian. Church of the Elders. Presbyopia. Your arms aren't long enough to see the page. That hits you when you're 40. Presbycusis hits you when you're 65. Trouble hearing treble. It's the most common hearing loss in the world. And it looks like this on a hearing test. This is called an audiogram. Pitch is on the top. The left side shows bass, the middle, mids, and the, the high numbers here, treble. Low C, middle C, high C, and octaves going higher shown from left to right. The numbers down the side are called decibels. So the O's are the right ear and the X's are the left ear. You can see that this person's hearing goes down in the highs. That means it doesn't take many decibels for the person right ear or left ear to hear the bass low pitch sounds like the vowels that come from your throat. But notice when you get to treble, the hearing goes down. More decibels are required to just barely hear the high-pitched sounds. And this is a typical hearing test result from a typical person with presbycusis, the most common hearing loss in the world. What is it? Difficulty hearing in background noise. Gradual loss of that crisp clarity of sound. Soft, high-pitched sounds are missing. Speech seems mumbled and unclear. I can hear you, but I just don't understand what you said. It's trouble hearing treble. Look at the letters of speech. All the sounds that use the throat, m, j, b, g, and all the vowels are louder and lower. But when you get to sounds like ch, sh, The high-pitched sounds we make with our lips, those are inaudible to this person. He or she can hear the lows, but has difficulty hearing the highs. Having trouble hearing what someone said. Dishes or fit fishes, kittens or mittens, 
Anyway, this is just an introduction to get you more interested in what we're going to be following with. Looking at causes of hearing loss, looking more inside the ear, looking at different types of hearing loss. All of these are to come.